Hello, my name is Nigar Dursun. I'm a physical medicine and rehab physician in Turkey. Firstly, I would like to thank Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology Editorial for this video podcast invitation. I'm here to discuss our paper entitled Intermittent Serial Casting for Risk Flexion Deformity in Children with Spastic Cerebral Palsy. In children with cerebral palsy, spasticity is one of the most common motor disorders and it leads to muscle contractures. In most children with cerebral palsy presenting with deformities, both neural and non-neural factors coexist. Spastic wrist flexion deformity is a frequent problem in children with cerebral palsy and is predominantly caused by spasticity of the palmar flexor muscle complex. It could be exacerbated by the weakness of the antagonist dorsi flexor muscles, and it could also involve soft tissue muscle contractures. Theoretically, in children with cerebral palsy, having both dynamic and static components contributing to any deformity, a combined treatment protocol with botulinum toxin injections and serial casting might provide better results than either treatment alone. Serial casting is one of the most commonly used interventions along with botulinum toxin injections and physical therapy regarding spastic deformities of the lower limb of children with cerebral palsy. However, there is limited data on serial casting of the upper limb in the current literature. In our experience, botulinum toxin is a substantial treatment which enhances, which optimizes the efficacy of other treatment modalities like physical therapy, orthotics, and casting. And from systematic reviews, we very well know that combined management with botulinum toxin and occupational therapy is more effective than occupational therapy alone to reduce impairment, to improve activity level outcomes, and to accomplish treatment goals. Although we have enough positive evidence for lower limb, the optimal strategy for serial casting in lower limb is also not so clear from the literature. Usually in serial casting protocols, each cast remains for approximately one week and is changed at weekly intervals. However, side effects like skin lesions, pain, edema, tendonitis, weakness, difficulties in activities of daily living like increased risk of falls or problems with baiting may impose limitations to these protocols. And we know that uh, from the recent evidence, early goal-oriented activity-based and intensive programs are needed to optimize neuroplasticity in children with cerebral palsy. Extended serial casting might limit intensive rehab programs, might prevent the active use of that extremity, especially for upper limb, by manual activities like eating, grassing, play, and may interrupt other activity-based programs like swimming. Aiming to improve patient adherence, decrease side effects, support active use, and allow combined treatment options, we developed and used an intermittent serial casting model for lower limb after botulinum toxin injections in our clinic. And this study was published in American Journal of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation in 2017. And the results of this randomized control trial showed that in children with cerebral palsy presenting echinus foot deformity, intermittent serial casting after botulinum toxin injections might provide additional benefits on passive range of motion, spasticity, and gait function. In this clinical trial, our objective was to show the effects of intermittent serial casting when combined with occupational therapy and botulinum toxin injections on passive range of motion on spasticity of children with cerebral palsy having spastic wrist flexion deformity. This randomized control trial was performed in two centers, one center in Turkey and one center uh, from Poland. Children with cerebral palsy uh, presenting spastic wrist flexion deformity aging from 3 to 18 were included in this clinical trial. In order to provide a purpose to treat population, 
who would both need and benefit from a combined treatment of botulinum toxin and serial casting. Children who were included in this clinical trial might present a modified Ashford scale score of at least three in risk flexor muscle group, and they should have no more than neutral dorsiflexion of a passive range of motion of the wrist joint when fingers were in full extension. As the efficacy of botulinum toxin is dose dependent, a minimum dosage of botulinum toxin to primary palmar flexor muscle group was also determined as an inclusion criteria in this clinical trial. And eligible 37 children were randomly assigned to casting or control groups at a ratio of two to one. Botulinum toxin injections were applied uh, to 21 uh, of these children in the operating room uh, whom moderate to deep sedation was required. Muscle selection, those dilution were individualized considering clinical presentation of the child. Injections were always guided by electrical stimulation and or ultrasound. All children received injections to primary palmar flexor muscles, flexor carpi radialis and flexor carpi ulnaris. Regarding other palmar flexor muscles, FDS, FDP, and FPL were injected in most of the cases with different combinations. Depending on the clinical presentation of the child. Other selected muscles were uh, pronators of the forearm, flexors of uh, the elbow joint, and uh, muscles required for thumb and palm deformity. 28 children also received injections to lower extremity muscles. Uh, and for these children, the total dose never exceeded 1,000 units of apobotulinum toxin A. Both casting and control groups received an occupational therapy program for three weeks, which started approximately 10 days later, botulinum toxin injection, passive range of motion, stretching, strengthening, weight-bearing exercises, and function, daily living, and play-based activities were the main components of this program. Additionally, a series of progressive casts were applied to the casting group. Assessments uh, were done at baseline and at week four and 12 after treatment and primary efficacy endpoints were passive range of motion and modified Ashworth scale. We also uh, measured spasticity by modified Tardu scale at week four and at week 12 in this clinical trial. Serial casting is application and removal of a series of casts with a low load continuous stretch aiming to progressively increase the range of motion of a joint. Serial casts may be applied at the end of passive range until the desired treatment goal is achieved in certain joints like ankle, but for upper limb, for wrist and hand, progressive tuning of the cast is much more complicated. In order to provide the best possible position to the primary flexor muscles of the wrist joint, the position of the wrist joint and inclusion of the fingers within the cast were progressively tuned according to the requirements, according to the needs assessed for each child. The position of the wrists and fingers before each cast was determined by the detailed examination of the senior physician who considered the resting posture of the wrist and hand, stiffness of the wrist and finger flexor muscles, their complex interrelations by tenodesis effect and by Eaton's angle, and the muscle strength of the wrist and finger extensor muscles in several combinations. Our protocol did not allow the wrist extension passive range of motion within the cast to exceed plus 20 degrees, so any patients beyond this range should be casted at or below plus 20 degrees of wrist extension and tuning of the cast continued with finger positioning as you can see here in the third casting of a child uh, from this clinical trial. 
In this study, the first cast was applied on Friday, approximately a week after botulinum toxin injections, and removed on the next Monday. So the, the cast stayed for a period of 72 hours. Occupational therapy in this group started after the removal of the first cast on Monday, and the second and third casts were applied on the following weekends. Occupational therapy continued on weekdays from Monday to Friday. And for adverse events, we gave clear instructions to children and parents to follow up for potential problems like pain, loss of sensation, finger edema, and poor capillary refill. Here we see the demographics of our population. The casting and control groups were found to be comparable with respect to age, sex, type of involvement, GMFCS, and max levels. Most of the children had unilateral involvement. Most of the children had GMFCS levels of one or two and max levels of two or three. The baseline passive range of motion, modified Ashford scale and TARDU data showed no significant differences between the casting and control groups. Significant improvements were obtained in passive range of motion, mass, and TARDU scale measurements in both groups, as you see from the table. However, mean improvements from baseline passive range of motion, both at week four and at week 12, of the casting group were significantly higher than that of the control group. Here we see uh, the modified dashboard scale and angle of catch of Tardew scale uh, of the casting and control groups. The mean change from baseline to week 12 in modified dashboard scale of the casting group was significantly higher than that of the control group. And the mean change of angle of catch of Tardu scale, both at week four and at week 12 of the casting group were significantly higher than those of the control group. No adverse events were noted in the control group and in the casting group, we removed the first cast uh, of three children on the first day of casting because of vascular problems and postpone the casting for uh, a week in these children. The heterogeneous nature of children with cerebral palsy and the complex anatomy and physiology of the wrist and fingers, the variability in casting protocols, the diversity in muscle selection, those dilution and application technique of botulinum toxin injections, create important obstacles for a general consensus in clinical practice. In this clinical trial in conjunction with our intermittent casting protocol, we were able to provide occupational therapy not only to the control group, but also to our casting group. Therefore, our study design enabled us to execute the additional efficacy of a low load continuous stretching by progressive intermittent casting. With this study, an intermittent serial casting program was introduced to literature. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first randomized controlled study that involves an intermittent serial casting treatment protocol simultaneously added to occupational therapy after botulinum toxin injections to the upper extremity. In this prospective randomized controlled trial, a treatment regimen of intermittent casting during three consecutive weekends plus occupational therapy during weekdays for three weeks showed better gains in passive range of motion of wrist extension, muscle tone and spasticity of the palmar flexor muscles when compared to occupational therapy only during weekdays for three weeks after botulinum toxin injections to palmar flexor muscles in a well-selected population of children with cerebral palsy presenting spastic palmar flexion deformity. The supplementation of intermittent casting periods resulted in additional benefits in improvement of passive range of motion and reduction of muscle tone by and spasticity in these children. I would like to thank all the children and parents involved in this study. Thanks to all rehab team from Kojeli PMR department from Turkey and Mozovian Neurorehabilitation Center from Poland 
And thanks to you all for listening.